Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Niche, a genetic survival game. In the last episode, we took our three separate pairs and started branching them off to different corners of the island to try to explore it a little bit more, hopefully find some berry bushes and maybe some nests along the way that we can kind of settle down in and make different groups of um, our little pack along the entire island. And we're probably going to continue doing that today. We do need to take a closer look at the newest generation that has been born into the island and kind of pair them off so that they will be able to continue on their lines in the future. But first, I wanted to thank you guys so much for all of the amazing things you've been sending me for this series, from your big expansive family trees to all of your gorgeous artwork. And I actually wanted to start us uh, sharing these things with you guys in these videos. So today we have this gorgeous piece by Rose Blossom. She actually painted one of these little critters to look like my real life cat, which absolutely made my day. Thank you so much, Rose Blossom, for this. I love how majestic she looks with her big antlers, which is kind of like a prominent gene in our pack at the moment anyway, because it seems like everybody has the antlers. So this is just amazing. I honestly can't thank you guys enough for all of the beautiful things you've been sending me. It just really makes me happy to know that you guys are enjoying the series as much as I am. So let's take a look at our pack now, because because in the last episode, right at the very end, we managed to successfully breed a boy with the poison fangs. And that's great, but I did notice, and ironically I believe it was Rose Blossom who warned me about this to begin with, this guy cannot attack. So that renders his poison fangs a little bit useless to him at the moment. He's kind of just like this big ball of poison with his toxic body and his runner legs. So we could have him basically charge off at a carnivore as like a sacrifice if we wanted to, but he wouldn't actually be able to attack them. So that's kind of a bit of a concern. I mean, it's great that we managed to get the poison fangs, but we're going to have to find a way to breed some sort of attack strength into their line as well. We'll have to keep that in mind too if we continue breeding Venti with Anakoana. Maybe we'll put the uh, the claw in the mutation menu just in case that happens again. The other thing I noticed though is that literally every single baby that has been born in this generation has immunity gene B somewhere in their genetics. So now we're running into the issue where we have a very, very shallow gene pool. And I know obviously the easiest way to combat that would be if we were able to find some wanderers in the grass. And we have a lot of rustling patches of grass, but particularly in the swamp, I'm pretty sure that these are bunnies because we have so many berry bushes here and they do like to steal our berries from us. The thing is, is that I'm pretty sure just based on my experience in this game and separate game files that I've played in the background, once the pack gets to a certain size, it seems like the game kind of stops the uh, wandering creatures from spawning. And I could be wrong, we could have some guys way out in the grasslands where we haven't even looked yet, and I'm not going to give up finding them, I do still definitely hope that we can, but I have a feeling that unless we let most of our creatures die off or we just let their numbers start dwindling one by one, we're probably not going to be seeing any new blood for a while. So that means for now, I am basically going to have to ignore the immunity gene situation. I'm going to have to just cross my fingers that all of our creatures don't end up sick and we're just for the sake of survival, just for the sake of continuing all of these separate lines, we're going to pay less attention to the immunity genes for now and hopefully in the future we'll be able to sort that out, especially if we manage to find a wanderer. For now though, what I thought I would do is bring Lalana over to this group to breed with Kukirkir once he grows up because since she has uh, those double paws there, I figured that that would be a good choice. It's probably much more likely that she'll be able to pass it down at least one paw to um, their children in the future so that they can continue on that line. And I was also thinking that we would take Kolara and breed her with this little boy over here, Kuvan, because they both have those big ears. So we're probably actually going to take Kuvan and travel him all the way over to this pack so that they can stay on this side of the island. Then we have these swamp creatures way up here. We have um, Isram with her berry paw, which I thought we would breed with. Let's see if I can find him. Um, is this? Yeah, Nukir Duke. I thought that we would breed Isram with Nukir Duke because he also has one of the berry paws. And I believe they both have the big body as well. 
Yeah, they do. So I thought that that might be a good idea. We might try that out as well. We'll bring um, Nukira Duke up toward the swamp in the meantime so that they can try to continue attempting to find some sort of nest up here. I would imagine we are probably going to find them in the grasslands somewhere up here so we can spread these guys out a little bit more because it becomes very, very hard to figure out who is who when they're all clustered together. And last but not least, I have not forgotten about Rear sitting on top of her bunny burrow. I really do like, just for the sake of of, I guess, um, story, adding a little bit of charm to our creatures, that our bunny duty critters have been predominantly um, blind. But because most of my males don't have the blind recessive gene at this point, it's likely that whichever baby she ends up having is just going to have the normal eyes. So what I wanted to do instead was go into our mutation menu and move the red fur in place of the toxic body and keep our dots over here as well, so that once we pick out a boy for her to breed with, she will hopefully be able to pass on some different genetics because because at the moment, I'm sure you guys have noticed, everybody basically looks the same right now. So we want to mix things up a little bit, at least in looks and uh, hopefully give them some nice red fur and continue her line of dots as well so that she can uh, maybe just make a little family of bunny duty creatures. Whether they're blind or not, she could definitely train up her sons and daughters for that job. So let's see who we could possibly choose to be the father. We have this guy over here, a little Vanku. Maybe you could help us out, actually. You have the poison fangs and your recessives too, so maybe if we're really, really lucky, we could uh, get some recessive poison fangs on their children as well. I think what I'll do is um, move rear to the nest, straight over to the nest, and then we'll bring Vanku up to her. Um, and then we will breed her with Vanku, and we'll see what sort of baby they give us. Hopefully it'll be a little bit different. And for now, Rokir, you can sit on top of the bunny burrow just so we don't end up losing any bunnies in the meantime. And how are the bunnies doing back here? Because I know they're hopping all over the place right now. Um, Cece is actually pregnant too with Vanta's very last um, child. So we do need to kind of bring her down to the nest because I'm not sure if we're going to be able to find one in time up here. Um, so let's see, is Rom, maybe for now you could just kind of like scoot over here and swipe up some of these berries for us. And oh dear, we'll gather up uh, this little bunny back here so we don't miss that either. We'll gather the meat in the next turn. And it looks like all of the other bunnies have gone away. I think so. Um, Cece, I would like to start moving you back toward the nest. That might be a good idea. We'll move her right here for now. And then if we could possibly move Anakoana to this nest, um, we could breed her with Ventaku one more time in the next turn after we can adjust our mutation menu again because I do want to make sure they have the claw on there when um, their next baby is born. So we'll move Kuvan right over here and we'll move Anakoana right here and then we will pass the turn because we are out of food yet again. Um, oh, perfect. Okay, so we have another good luck baby here giving us a nice uh, rain and it looks like she has a claw too, which is excellent because uh, she will definitely be able to attack all of the bunnies that come hopping out of those burrows. So Rear can kind of like train up her daughter to uh, be a proper, oh, bunny hunter and Roro here, you can actually grab this guy. Oh gosh, but I made you starve. There we go. And uh, we we can gather up the berries in the meantime. You might as well gather up this. Um, it looks like there's a bunny right here trying to grab our berries, which we don't want to happen. There we go, and another bunny. Oh my goodness, they are everywhere right now. Nukir Duke, you can come up here. Um, if I could position him right between these bushes, that would probably be ideal. So let's see, we can put him right here. Unfortunately, that makes him run out of turns, and I see this little guy back here, but unfortunately, she's also out of turns, so that's not going to help us very much. Um, let's see, so right now we can fix the mutation menu so Anaquana can have another child. We'll swap the claw out with the dots, I think. We'll see how um, that works. Hopefully, if they have another child with the poison fangs, they will also have Anaquana's big claw. Um, Ventaku, why don't you gather up a couple of these berries before you um, go breed with her. There we go. That should help us out a little bit. And hey, little bunny, get away from those. Those are mine. Oh, gosh. We need to have somebody over here helping um, Anar with her issues. Let's see. Maybe Meme can get back there fast enough. She might be able to. Get out of here, little bunny. There we go. Meme, save the day. And um, Lalana, unfortunately, cannot move very far. She is very, very slow because she has those two claws and um, she can't gather either. So we have to have Kalara kind of gather up these for now. 
Um, there we go. We did want to start moving Lalana over toward the middle nests anyway, so I think we might start doing that now. We do have enough food to uh, take care of that for us, and it will take her quite a few turns to get over there because she does not have a, a very high stat in speed. Vendukvan, maybe you should see what's over here. Um, okay, so that must just be a bunny yet again. Um, somebody mentioned that I should just make basically paths through here, so I shouldn't explore all of the grass just so we can continue to have things spawning in here. And I do like that idea, so that's kind of why I'm going in these weird strips at the moment. Until we manage to find a nest, we're just going to make these tile-wide paths through all of the um, tall grass. And let's see, who else has a turn here? You have a turn. You can gather up these berries. There you go. And let's see, um, you, CC, could go to one of these nests to have your baby now because we do want that to um, get taken care of. And hopefully she'll have a male because we are also strangely low on males. Right now, the only family who has had any sort of uh, males in their line have been Anakoana and Ventaku. So hopefully CC and Venta can have at least one male so that we can uh, properly spread out the lines here. And those bunnies, they're going to steal up all of my berries. But I think that's about it for this turn. Um, it looks like nobody else can really take a turn over here. So we will skip ahead in the day and see what sort of baby they give us now. CC and Anakuana, which are ironically sisters, and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, we managed to get another one with the fangs, and there we go. Now he has the claw and the big body, so he should be a very, very good attacker. There we go, he has four in strength, he has the venomous skill, and he also has a berry paw, which is quite unique. Okay, so he is a very well-rounded individual, though he can only move two tiles because he has a, um, a pretty low speed. I think his hind legs are the only things giving him speed right now. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but at least we managed to breed a uh, poison fang pack member who actually can help us out with um, his venomous skill. And then Cece's cub over here has um, some orange fur, and I have to kind of like get through all of these guys. We have so many pack mates now. If we turn them this way, that might be easier. There we go. He has the berry paw, it looks like, and he has a normal body. And oh my goodness, he actually doesn't have immunity gene B, guys. Oh my gosh, that is excellent. He has C and D. Okay, so there's a possibility that we might be able to um, breed him a little bit more to hopefully carry on the D immunity gene. Oh my gosh, I wish we had bred Vanta a little bit more because I think that was from him. But he unfortunately passed away in the last episode. And little bunny, you are definitely going to get eaten. And you too, thank you very much. Now we have two to collect. Okay, that's not bad. And now we can uh, use Nukaduk to uh, gather up all of these berries. He can just kind of like swap in between these two. And uh, Kois, let's see, where can we place you? You should probably come back here to help your sister out. So we'll, oh yes, <laughs> she's going to have a little bit of trouble with all of those bunnies it looks like. We'll have her come over here so that she can see a little bit further in. Um, and it looks like we have a bunny back there kind of stealing our berries too. Can I scare him away with a Kukirkir maybe? There we go. He kind of darted back there a little bit. Um, let's see, how about these guys over here? What are we going to do with you? Oh, wait a second, it looks like um, we unlocked another gene too. I didn't notice that. Okay, so the red fur actually mutated thanks to that little cub that was born over there. And now we have some yellow fur that we can drop in here too. I'm going to keep the um, red fur in here a little bit longer, I think, just so that we can uh, get some different looking pack mates in here. But yeah, since um, Kier Duke was born with the red fur, it actually mutated into the yellow fur option for us. So that's good. We're slowly but surely kind of diversifying the looks of our lines at least. And now if we move this little baby out of the nest, she can kind of like sit next to the burrow too because that's going to be her job pretty soon as well. We can bring Vanku back over here so that they can have one more baby. Um, let's actually just really quickly plop the dots right back in here and then we'll have them breed as well. There we go. And hello, little bunny. You are not taking any more of my berries. Thank you very much. And I see this guy hopping in and out too. Um, we need somebody else up there to help them out, in fact. Um, I think Anna Koana actually might be passing away in the next couple of turns. I'm not sure if she's going to be able to have another baby. We don't really have a nest that's free in the area. So what we might do is bring Ventaku up here to kind of like help his children guard all of these bushes because there's so many up here toward the swamplands. We'll save his one turn just in case the bunny hops back out. 
But let's see, we need to uh, focus on this group over here too. The only problem with spreading them out is now there's so many places that I have to uh, keep track of. So we wanted to keep moving Lalana over this way. We'll move her right in the middle so she's right by um, these nests over here. And there he is, there he is back there. There we go, so we managed to uh, gather up another one of those bunnies. And we should also probably start moving Kuvan over this way so that he will be in the area for, um, oh, what's her name? It was Kolara, so that they'll be in um, a similar location so that they can breed as soon as he grows up. So Van Dukvan, let's move you um, a little bit closer to the berry bushes so that he can pick up those with his berry paw. And Kolara, why don't you peek in this grass? We'll start making a path off of this way and hopefully we'll find a nest as well. We'll bring Van Dukvan up here so he can gather up these berries. Oh, hello, little bunny. You saw that I was out of turns with Kolara, it looks like. There we go. At least we managed to uh, gather up all of the berries on that bush. And it looks like they're kind of picking the rest of them clean at the moment. And um, we have a couple more that we could possibly gather from in the future, but we'll have to keep an eye on those guys, of course, as always. Cece, why don't you move up this way again? Um, maybe she could actually collect some of this meat. There we go. That'll help us out a little bit. And now we should probably skip the turn. Um, oh, wait a second. You have one more turn you could gather up this from. There we go. Okay, so we can skip the turn now. And then look at the next little baby from rear. Oh, Sira, that is adorable. And there's the poison fangs and the recessives again. So now we have like another little mini family that we could possibly breed the poison fangs with. We will be moving her toward the bunny burrow too in the future, but hopefully we can find another one out here somewhere. Hopefully we can figure out where the rest of these bunnies are spawning so that we can kind of spread those guys out as well. Um, let's have you pick up the meat and we'll have you scoop up these berries because those bunnies are getting very, very close. There we go. Now we're gathering up our food again, which is good to see. And um, we can gather up these berries. We can gather up these. So many berries in the swamp. Um, Kukir here. let's see. We want to keep you by the nest because you are going to be breeding with one of our females very, very shortly. But Cece, why don't you go off into the swamps with your daughters? You guys can hopefully continue carving this path over here. We'll peek in this grass so that um, our other creatures will be able to walk properly through them once, um, once these guys pass away. And let's see, can anyone else gather up any berries? It looks like we're pretty bare at the moment, so we're going to have to uh, wait for another rainfall. There's this one over here, but Kolara, why don't you start scooting up this way? We'll see if anything is up there, and then Van Dukvan can kind of like follow in her footsteps. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything in this little patch, so we'll have to keep moving up along the shore. And let's see, how close are you to growing up? Um, it looks like this guy's almost grown, so we'll move him a little bit closer to the nest as well. We'll swap him out with uh, Kierduk over here so he can kind of like scoot off maybe in this direction and he can keep an eye on the grass over here. We should probably once again kind of expand this area so that we're less likely to run into carnivores in the future. Um, we'll have Anakoana peek in the grass for some of her very last turns, which is so sad because I do love Anakoana. She has the most gorgeous name. And let's see, Venku, I believe, um, yeah, Rear is unfortunately going to be passing away very soon. So at least she's able to kind of like carry on her legacy through her daughters, even though they're not blind, they'll be able to uh, take up the bunny duty that she was so very good at doing. Um, Roro here, you can actually probably move off of bunny duty yourself. Um, maybe he can kind of like help teach the daughters as well for that matter. He can teach them as they kind of stay around this area to keep watch over the bunnies. And Kuvan, you are almost grown as well, which is good to see. We'll have Meme pick these berries right here. This guy's getting close. Is he trying to go back home, maybe? I'm not sure. And then um, Kuvan, we actually want you to kind of like move out of the nest for that matter because you are not the one who is going to be giving birth. That is not the way it works. Um, Anir, I wonder if we can move you up this way. Yeah, we'll move her right there for now so she can kind of keep track of that berry bush because we haven't stayed there in a very, very long time. The uh, bunnies have kind of taken over this area. So we'll have her gather up those just in case it rains again. And uh, let's see, let's see. Most of these guys are actually out of turns. Um, we have this one who can maybe peek in the grass over here. Just, um, I see you eating my berries, I know. Just so the bushes will be clear of grass at least. And now I think I'll skip the turn, there we go. Um, oh no, oh no, there's Anakoana. Anakoana ended up passing away. Oh gosh, they just go so fast. 
And actually, we could have our daughter here, the um, little daughter of Rear, grab this bunny for us. There we go. So there's her first little action on bunny duty. She's learning slowly but surely, learning from all of the more experienced members of the pack. And let's see, is there anyone up here? It looks like you are actually going to have to chase this bunny away because it is very, very persistent. So we'll have him sit there and hopefully this little bunny will get a little bit closer. And hey, hey, excuse me. You thought I wouldn't notice you or you. Okay, gathering up all the meat over here now. So we are also beginning to clear out all of the bunnies too, which is good because it seems like most times the grass is just another bunny rustling away, trying to get me to use up all of my turns chasing him. So let's peek around in this grass so we can kind of see the whole area. And um, Kolara, why don't you come over here? Because I believe Kuvan should be growing up very, very soon. So let's just use up some of our last turns on gathering up these berries. We can move the sisters just a little bit further, I think. And oh dear, grab that too. There we go. Um, the sisters can keep going toward the grasslands. Well, there's another berry bush. That's good. That's always good to see. So we'll move her up this way and uh, hopefully we can clear out this little area as well. The swamp is definitely the best place to find berry bushes I've found. Um, it seems like that's definitely where most of them are. And now we might as well skip ahead and, um, oh, there goes Rear too. Oh, poor little Rear. She died right on top of her daughter too, which is so sad. Kukirkir is unfortunately not grown just yet, but there we go, Kuvan is grown. So we can start this little branch of the family as well once we gather up some more food because I believe we're almost out of turns here. So we'll gather up this, we'll swipe up some berries and then that should be good. We can move Kolara over to the nest right here and then she can breed with Kuvan and we'll see what they give us. I'm sure it's going to be a nice big eared antlered individual with claws because they are both very very similar in that respect um, we can have Meme pick these berries it looks like she's almost done too oh my gosh she's getting very close to the end of her life um, I'm not sure if we could possibly have these guys breed one more time I have a feeling that since we don't have another nest in the area just yet she wouldn't be able to get to a nest in time before she passes away. Um, we could always give it a try, just a risky little try, but I'm not even sure if Vendukvan can get to her in time. Um, well, there we go. We can breed them, and then if she kind of goes off toward this nest, then maybe we'll have a chance to have one more meme baby before she passes away. And then let's take our swamp pair up here and uh, continue pushing out. So let's see, which one had the berry paw? Is Ram has the berry paw? So you you can gather up the berries here. Um, that should be good. She gathered them all up in one swipe too, actually. That wasn't bad at all. Um, Cece looks like she's going to be passing away too. And this guy's getting very, very close. I have my eye on you, little guy. Let's have these guys go off a little bit further. They'll continue carving their path this way. Um, Kois, you can follow your sister. And we'll see what they managed to find. It doesn't look like there's much out here. Um, there's another berry bush. That's good. Another little bunny too that I can't even grab. We'll have to grab up some berries at least though because we are getting dangerously low on food once again. But hopefully in the next episode, little Kukirkir will be growing up so that we can start this line of a poison fangs as well. I think actually Tadukir might be a good match for Lalana too. We might try them both and see if, uh, if we can maybe keep those poison fangs on them. I'm not sure if it's going to work though because I have a feeling that we're only going to get the poison fangs in the recessive slot just because the Lana has the antlers so prominently in her genes and the antlers seem to be a little bit more dominant than the poison fangs so we'll have to test things out, experiment a little with this branch of the family and hopefully eventually we'll be able to have this little warrior branch with their big poison fangs. But apart from that, thank you all so much for watching today and I will see you all next time. Bye guys.